What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Ride Share Hub. My name is Greg Wave. Uh, today, I've got 12 tips for driving part time. Um, I have been a full time driver as well as a part time driver, pretty equally as well. So. For the most part, I've experienced both. Um, I do prefer part-time driving. I'll explain why, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna give you guys 12 tips on how to be a better part-time driver, all right? So uh, for number one is, and this is just kind of big for this in general, but you are a 1099, so you've gotta be very careful about tracking your mileage, tracking your expenses, and make sure you're really capitalizing on as many write-offs as you can because you are going to need them. The last thing you want is to be doing this and have to owe money at the end of the year. But if you do this the right way, in general, you'll be totally squared away and you won't owe the IRS anything. So it's very important that you're tracking every single mile. Um, number two is Gig Mobile. I don't know how many of you guys have heard about this, but Gig Mobile is basically an unlimited data plan. It's Twelve fifty a week, so you're talking like what fifty, fifty one, fifty two dollars a month. Like, that's actually a solid data plan. I'm actually really considering switching because I have unlimited data with Verizon, um, and I pay probably about thirty bucks more a month for it. So, look into uh, Gig Mobile, guys. That is, I mean, unlimited data is an absolute necessity for this. Like, you're gonna get like four or five days of full driving in if you don't have unlimited data before your you know your data plans pretty much expensed because <laughs> you put a ton of data on your phone bill um, number three is uh, having an effective side hustle or a main career or something you're really pursuing um, you know that that's the best way to always do this is to use Lyft or uber or whatever it is that you're driving for Use it as something that's kind of helping you build your career, build your dream life, put extra money in savings. Maybe you're throwing it in a mutual fund. Maybe you're just saving up. I have a buddy who, uh, him and his friends, they all drove Lyft for like one month part time. And then they bought, I think, a, a new Xbox as well as like a big, um, a big beer refrigerator. So maybe you're just doing it for those reasons. But whatever it is, um, yeah, ha having this as a side hustle and then having an additional, whether you want to call it a side hustle, if you're an artist like me, like I'm pursuing acting and so Lyft helps me support that dream. So whatever it is for you, you know, have something you're going after, but don't leave it at just ride sharing. Um, let's see. So, uh, number five is going to be rest. Um, that's, you know, should be self-explanatory for the most part. But uh, the reason I say that is I do talk to these guys all the time at the airport lot uh, for Uber and Lyft that they're just powering out like 60 hours a week and they look drained. They look like they're about to die. <laughs> Hopefully they don't. Um, and in general, it just, you know, I think what's it what's interesting about ride sharing and you know the ability to 1099 is you have two types of people you have the person who doesn't really work that much because they get to make their own hours so they become lackadaisical and they don't work that much because no one's forcing them to work and then you've got the guy who's like the mega insanity hustler and he's like okay i'm gonna work 70 to 80 hours a week because i can <laughs> because i have the ability to do it right so um, I think that's pretty dangerous because one thing I've noticed is that like for me, I've had times like driving, I feel like is an easy thing to just zone out, space out and get really tired doing. And so I've had times where I only got like three, four hours of sleep the night before. And then I was going to go drive eight hours of Lyft and Uber and it'll only be like 2 PM and I'll be nodding off at the wheel already. And that's why I think it's so important to, you know, give yourself effective rest because it's one thing if you have an office job and you nod off at that, you know, but if you're driving a vehicle and you're nodding off any time of day, I mean, they say that it's more dangerous to drive, um, you know, deprived of sleep than it is drunk. So you got to be really careful with that. It's not something to just kind of, you know, roll your eyes at, like you got to really make sure you're resting. Um, Let's see, for uh, number six, it is budgeting your time the right way. Um, 
this is very, very important because a lot of times what happens is you can drive for Uber and Lyft, but maybe you can only do like two hours a day. So ideally you want to do those two hours either in the morning at the morning rush or in the afternoon at the work rush. But if it's midday, it's really not worth it especially if you're just doing a small amount of time. If it's very, very late night, it's usually not worth it either. Um, and then on weekends, you know, obviously you want to hit those prime hours going from like, I think eight to 9 PM till like two or three in the morning is super valuable and the best time to really ever drive. So do whatever you got to do with your schedule. Um, if there are ways where you can flip your schedule around that you can be driving during peak hours, that's what you really want to be doing because otherwise it's not really worth your time. Uh, number seven is having good playlists. Have a wide variety. My playlists look like I have a classic rock playlist. I have like a hip hop and R and B. Um, I have like an alternative. I have one. I, and then like, if there's just a really good artist, like I have a, a John Mayer playlist and it's just John Mayer because who really doesn't like John Mayer. And, uh, I will say that the John Mayer playlist is always my go-to if I'm like unsure what someone's going to like, because most people, even if they're not the biggest fan of him, his, his music's pretty chill. So they'll just, they can just kind of vibe out and relax, you know? But, um, I have all kinds of different playlists and if people ask for a change in music, you know, I run it by them. Hey, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. I, I have about 10 I use um, and they're good. They're good ass playlists. So make sure you have some solid playlists that people can pick from um, and definitely hitting all age groups, you know, like <laughs> one of the best moves I've done now, I'm like a classic rock junkie, but when older people are getting in my car and I have like some crazy like 60s artists that most people my age shouldn't know like if I'm jamming to Con um to uh Conway Twitty or something like that it's like an instant hit with like the older crowd because they're like wow look at this young guy who knows music from the 60s 70s 80s whatever it is that you're playing um it goes down really well and usually it segues into a good conversation and usually I get a fat tip from it so Playlists are important, you know, you don't want to sleep on playlists. Um, number eight is having good podcasts, audiobooks. That's just for you, you know, if you do have downtime, have something that you're playing. I have uh, a lot of podcasts I play just even while I'm on my way to rides. I'm a big NBA basketball fan, so I have NBA podcasts. And a lot of times I'm only getting five to ten minutes to listen to it going to each ride. But when you're doing rides all throughout the day, all those little monotonous rides, like the in-between time starts to feel really annoying. So that's why I like having a podcast that I really enjoy to listen to just even in those in-between rides. Number nine is pack your own lunch, pack your own dinner, pack your own snacks, whatever it is based on what time you're going. You're going to blow way too much money eating out. Just don't do it. It's, it's seriously the biggest waste of money. It's one of the things that can like kill your expenses doing this. Uh, number 10 is setting realistic goals. You know, I think once you have a set schedule, it's good to set goals because, um, um, it gets you a little bit more motivated to get out there. So if you want to be saving an additional $200 a week and you can work four days a week, um, base your hours around being able to realistically hit that goal. I, I like having a goal set because um, it just gets me more motivated to be out there. So I set mine at $600 a week, which for part time is like not impossible, but it's not like necessarily the easiest thing either. So I have to be really dedicated about driving at all the right times each day that I want to work to make sure I make that extra 600 each week. And I usually can as long as I can do weekends and about three weekdays, I can usually hit it. And that's probably 30, 35 hours. Um, let's see, um, the next one is, oh, this is huge. Check your back seats after every single ride. This you wanna do because people will leave keys, they will leave cell phones. Uh, Uber and Lyft are both pretty good about compensating you if you do have to return it. But when it really sucks is, um, 
you know, when it's uh, like prime time or like a really good hour to be driving and you're returning a cell phone and you, oh yeah, you get 15 bucks, but you might have gotten a way better ride. So check your uh, back seat after every single ride because I'm telling you guys, it is incredibly annoying having to return stuff for people. Um, and my very last tip is just being effective about cleaning your car, you know, uh, basic maintenance, basic car cleaning is just going to very much ensure that you're going to get better tips. So make sure you're taking care of your vehicle, guys. No one wants to get into a dirty, dinged up car. Um, so yeah, that's what I got for you guys today. Um, I'm going to be doing a full time video as well soon. So make sure you check that out. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, crush it, and I will see you guys soon.